Entrepreneurship and Virtue Ethics So far I have sketched the entrepreneurial process in terms of the traits and actions that lead to entrepreneurial success. What does this have to do with morality? Let me first make a connection to morality by means of quotations from three major names in the history of entrepreneurship. J.P. Morgan, Georges Doriot, and Kevin O'Connor. J.P. Morgan was an American banker and financier of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He was testifying before a government hearing and a senator asked him, quote, whether money was always loaned out based on one's assets. Morgan replied, quote, no sir, the first thing is character. And Morgan continued, if someone he couldn't trust asked for funding, he wouldn't make the loan even if he had, quote, all the bonds in Christendom. Georges Doriot is often described as the father of venture capitalism. He was a Frenchman who immigrated to the U.S. in the middle part of the 20th century. A biographer described him this way, Doriot spends most of his time talking to people who bring him prospective investments. He says he has considered no less than 5,000 of them since 1946. He is considered by friends and critics alike as a brilliant judge of character. But he has to be, he explains, quote, when someone comes in with an idea that's never been tried, the only way you can judge is by the kind of man you're dealing with. Kevin O'Connor is a 21st century venture capitalist who was co-founder and former CEO of DoubleClick. DoubleClick is the world's largest internet advertising technology company and was recently acquired by Google for several billion dollars. In an interview, O'Connor was asked what he looks for in people who are seeking venture capital from him. Quote, I look at three big things. Have they found a big problem in a big market? Have they solved the problem in what I believe to be the most effective way? And are they able to pull it off? Are they smart? Are they aggressive? Are they honest and hardworking?" Unquote. Now note the common theme in the quotations from Morgan, Doria, and O'Connor, character. The three men speak of being trustworthy, being smart, honest, hardworking, having character, and so on. In their expert judgment, estimating future business success is first about judging character. Now let me connect entrepreneurial success and morality by talking about virtue. One major approach to ethics is through the study of virtue. Virtues are action-guiding character traits that aim at good results. The ethics literature is populated with many competing accounts of what the good results should be and consequently with competing accounts of what virtues we should uphold. Some virtue ethicists make the claim that character has priority in ethical evaluation over rules or principles, actions, and consequences. Now, setting aside the issue of whether virtue has priority, my concern here is to connect entrepreneurial traits and virtues. Virtue is about good character in action. Here is our list of entrepreneurial elements. Knowledge and creativity, ambition, guts, initiative, perseverance, trial and error, productivity, win-win trade, leadership, experiencing and enjoying success. Now, if we cash out the above entrepreneurial character traits in terms of virtues, that is, in terms of the character traits and commitments that enable and constitute good action, then we can make the following connections. First, the entrepreneurs generating and evaluating informed and creative ideas connects to the virtue of rationality. Rationality is the commitment to the full exercise of one's reason. The entrepreneur's initial active and creative thinking are functions of reason, as is the exercise of evaluative judgment in determining which business ideas are actually good ones. It requires the mature development of one's mind, being able to think outside the given and the usual, but that's the way we've always done it. Next. The entrepreneur's ambition and drive for success connect to the virtue of pride. Pride has a forward-looking and a backward-looking aspect. For example, to 
taking pride in what one has accomplished. It's the forward-looking aspect that is relevant here. Taking pride in oneself means wanting the best for one's life, which means a felt commitment to achieving the best in one's life. For example, taking pride in one's appearance means wanting to look one's best, which implies a commitment to health, hygiene, and style. To connect back to business and entrepreneurship, the entrepreneur's drive for success is a consequence of taking pride in the business part of his or her life. Next, the entrepreneur's showing initiative by being a self-starter and committing to bringing the business plan into existence connects to the virtue of integrity. Integrity is the policy of acting on the basis of what one believes to be true and good. It is translating thought into practice. That is, one's thoughts are integrated with one's actions, or one's beliefs about what would be good are integrated with one's actions to bring that good into existence from planning. Next, the entrepreneur's commitment to action despite the fear that comes from being aware of the risks, connects to the virtue of courage. Courage is the virtue of committing to an action that one judges to be right, while being aware, both intellectually and emotionally, of the possibilities of failure. Three aspects of failure are relevant here. One aspect is financial failure. Another aspect is negative reactions or being judged a failure by others. Another aspect is self-reflective, seeing oneself as a failure. Courage means facing and surmounting these fears. Next, entrepreneurs persevering through difficulties, disapproval, and other temporary doubts connects with the virtue of independence. Independence is the virtue of trusting one's own judgment and acting on the basis of one's best judgment despite one's own short-term frustrations and the contrary opinions of others. Next, the entrepreneur is working through the trial and error process of product development, connects to the virtue of objectivity. Objectivity is the policy of guiding one's thoughts by one's best awareness of the facts, of being open to new facts, or, to put it negatively, not wearing intellectual blinders and avoiding uncomfortable feedback from reality. An important constituent element of objectivity here is the virtue of honesty, the policy of not pretending to oneself or to others that facts are not facts. Next in the list, the entrepreneur's productivity connects to the virtue of productiveness. Productiveness is a commitment to the creation of value to being self-responsible for bringing into existence that which one needs. When the going gets tough, when you're almost finished but you're tired and you're ready for the next thing, nonetheless to be able to see it through and make it happen and complete the project. Next, the entrepreneur's trading value for value with customers and employees connects to the virtue of justice. Justice is a commitment to evaluating and interacting with individuals according to their merit, and a correlative commitment to being oneself evaluated and interacted with on the basis of one's own merit. Justice applied to business means trades are entered into voluntarily, that is, on the basis of each party's independent judgment, and that the terms of the trade are established by each party's independent judgment of the merits of the trade. Each party gets from the trade an amount that each judge is worthy, and each gives to the other an amount each judge is worthy. That's a mutual commitment to justice. Next, leadership. Leadership involves many traits, vision, communication skill, independence, decisiveness, and justice. And we do not have in English a virtue concept for that set of traits. Instead, we typically sort people as good or bad leaders and identify the collection of traits that make some individuals effective leaders. So let us simply give the awkward label leadershipness to the commitment to and practice of leadership traits. Finally, the entrepreneurs achieving success, including the financial and psychological rewards of creating a flourishing business, connect to the general moral values of flourishing, happiness, and fulfillment. 
Flourishing or happiness is the state of successful living. As one's business life is a component of one's overall life, the entrepreneur's engaging in the actions that lead to flourishing in business is a component of an overall flourishing life. The entrepreneur's actions both constitute and lead to a life that is fully realized. Now summarizing all of the above in a table, we get the following. First I'll say the entrepreneurial success trait, then I'll say the related moral virtue. Knowledge and creativity connected to rationality. Ambition connected to pride. Guts connected to courage. Initiative connected to integrity. Perseverance connected to independence. Trial and error experiment connected to objectivity, including honesty. Productivity connected to productiveness. Win-win trade connected to justice. Leadership connected to leadershipness. And, and experiencing and enjoying success connected to self-esteem and flourishing. If this analysis is correct, then it suggests a strong connection between entrepreneurial success and moral virtue. The virtues and values listed in the right column of our table together constitute a virtue code for entrepreneurial business. To put it in philosopher's terms, that set of moral virtues is an abstraction on a description of entrepreneurial activity. The thoughts and actions of entrepreneurs are particulars of a more general set of moral success traits. Those success traits of entrepreneurs are particulars of a general set of virtues. Or to put it another way, when we teach the skills necessary for business success, the list on the left side of the table is what we're teaching. When we teach moral virtue, the list on the right is what we teach. And they come to the same thing. The moral is the practical, and the practical is the moral. Questions for reflection and discussion. One, character is destiny. That's a strong assertion. To what extent do you think success in life and business is a matter of character, luck, or other factors? Two, how strong do you think the connections are between the entrepreneurial success traits and the moral virtues? Take each pairing in the table and judge whether the connection is strong or weak. Three, in your judgment, are other virtues not mentioned in the table essential for entrepreneurial success?